Hello there and welcome to Bill Making Stuff. Hold on, stop, stop, stop. Why, why are you pointing the camera at him? He's a, he's a Lego version of me. He can't actually talk, that's me talking, so just keep the camera on me, thanks. Hello, welcome to Bill Making Stuff, episode 22. Today I want to make some terrain. I haven't made terrain in a while, um, not since my pound shop truck, and they still, they still haven't got in touch. So anyone who's been watching my program for a while, they, they would have heard me talking about this kind of junk planet, rusty junk planet thing, uh, and I want to make a board. I want to make a board for a game, and it's of this rusty junk planet. So today I want to make some Rusty Junk Hills, or more specifically, uh, a robot graveyard. Not graveyard, like as in a yard full of gravy, like a graveyard where you go to die, like this episode. If you don't like people breaking models, handmade models, if you don't like people breaking them apart and uh, stuff like that, then you probably shouldn't watch. But they're my models, you know. If anyone should be affected, it should be me. But I'm, I'm, I'm a stone. They were from a time before YouTube. The builds are mounting up and I'm in a cupboard. So, so I want to try a few things today. I want to um, make a kind of flock for scrap piles. Hard to explain. It's best if I just show you. Um, yeah, I'll just show you. So we need some lumps of XPS foam and this is how I got them. So to make your lumpy foam things you need some of this expanding foam. Uh, this is Gorilla Filler, I got this from the pound shop, obviously. So like incredibly slow magic, it turns into this lump of foam. Uh, every single one I made had this rounded bottom so just use a knife to cut that away and flatten them out. You just keep shaving away at the bottom until it sits flat on the table. Uh, excuse me guys, do you mind? Cheers, thanks. Uh, when it sits flat, I shaved the sides and made it look more like a pile of something rather than a lump of something. Is it weird that I want to keep these little lumpy bits of foam? I mean, they're, they're essentially small piles already, aren't they? So I decided to go with the laminate floor tiles again as my base material. Um, they worked really well last time, so I thought I'd give them a go. Uh, they're waterproof, as we all know, and they are cheap. And of course, the most important thing in a base material, will it warp when it's covered in PVA glue or speckle? And these don't, so there you go. And they're cheap. So last time I used this expanding foam, I wanted to spray paint it, uh, but I didn't because, you know, foam and spray paint doesn't mix. It usually dissolves and melts. Um, but someone said to me, uh, Bill, you know you can use spray primer on this kind of foam? I'm like, you're an idiot. Get out. Turns out you can. Um, I do apologize. Um, this is why I don't have friends. So if I want to make a pile of junk, I'm going to go through all my junk. And this is the junk of my junk. I've got good junk, and this is the offcuts of that good junk that I don't use. So I threw it all in this box, and I'm going to use them in my junk pile. You may recognize some of these uh, the bits from previous builds, namely the Metroid one. So I wanted the 
robot graveyard to be kind of detailed and I didn't want to make robots from scratch. I already had all these robots that I built a long time ago. They keep falling apart, they take up too much space in my shelf. I couldn't sell them or send them because they were just breaking the post. Uh, and they were practice pieces, you know, it's when I was learning how to make stuff. This one's got giant robot butt cheeks for some reason. No, it's, it's strange really, I mean I broke these robots to pieces and it didn't bother me at all, you know, it didn't, it didn't make, it didn't, it didn't feel the thing. <laughs> Goodbye my friends, you go to a better place, you go to a better place. So from here, I just kind of poked holes into the foam and stuck my robot pieces in. Um, the foam's still flexible, so you can just poke them in like that. Uh, kind of fun in a morbid way. I do apologize to any robots out there. Um, sorry. Obviously one benefit to this is these pieces have already been painted. I won't have to paint them again, which is always a good thing. The less painting, the better, you know me. So once you've figured out where you're going to put all the little bits and pieces, uh, get your glue gun out. Budgets. So now I started to get a little bit experimental and I wanted to make like a sculpt to mold stuff with beads and bits of plastic that look like bits of rusty metal. Uh, involves beads, anyway. Lots and lots of beads. Um, also some nylon brush bristles because I wanted uh, some weird texture in there. Basically anything that was plastic, small, and was a weird shape, uh, a non-organic shape, and chucked in. Because, uh, you know, experimentation. This was just another way of me recycling all the little bits I'm not going to use, like the off cuts from previous projects and the beads that I can't fit in my bead container. So at this point of the build I wanted to make three different tones of rust, so I had three different trays and I wanted them to be different colours, which was ultimately completely pointless. And uh, this only serves to demonstrate how kind of stupid I am, I guess. Or, or, or the process, yeah, the process. On the other hand, if you have ever wondered how to paint a lot of little bits and pieces like this in one go uh, with good coverage then stick them in a little bowl or a tray like this and just stir them like some rusty bolognese it looks like bolognese so this is the midpoint of the video where i'm supposed to say click that like button comment click the subscribe button all that stuff really helps in the uh the algorithm but i did it last week um, so I'm not going to do it this week. I'm going to save you from it because, uh, you know, it does get annoying. Just, you know. So it's time to get out your kitchen foil or aluminium foil. Don't argue with me. And roll up the edges to make kind of a lip, like a really crap ashtray you'd make your mum on Mother's Day. Thank you. 
Make sure you give this stuff a good shake because it tends to cluster together. But there is my scrap flock. Yeah. And it actually works. So along with my rusty flock, I need to make some bigger pieces of scrap metal. And these uh, closed pegs make complicated shapes. So the hair curlers are really good. So you can take old pens, uh, some plastic knives and forks. Um, you see the pattern here? Things that are cheap, disposable, and uh, have interesting shapes, like these freezer bag clips and these plastic flutes. I mean, you can probably leave out the plastic flutes. I really impressed myself with some of those cuts. That was, that was absolutely seamless. So much like the rusty flock, I painted these pieces of metal in different tones of orange uh, to represent different tones of rust. Unlike the rusty flock, this actually worked out, because uh, you'll see. So this little pot of instant grout is from the pound shop. Now, I can't recommend this stuff enough. It's a pound, and you can just do anything with this stuff, honestly, anything. That's water, despite the colour. But trust me, that's that's water. And what we have there is some good old scratch fashion spackle soup with brown paint. So therefore it's my recipe, technically. And then we just chuck the flock in there. Hence the reason why it was completely pointless to paint in different colours. But live and learn. And then we have the Rusty Ragu, uh, trademark filmmaking stuff. No one will ever make this stuff again, but, uh, you know, trademark. So I guess it's pretty obvious what you have to do from this point on. You have to take your Rusty Ragu and paste it all over your little hill. Uh, I guess we could do a time lapse. Yeah, why not? So I made several batches of this Rusty Ragu and it works out better if you use less flock and more water in your spackle soup, but this worked out fine. So like the animated title said, it's greebly time, uh, my favourite time in a build. Obviously, the word Greebly comes from the name Greg Greebly, the man who invented Greeblies. Uh, don't look that up. So I was actually quite looking forward to painting this thing. It's basically just a lot of detail to dry brush. And it's, yeah, it's going to be a lot of dry brushing. Who doesn't like dry brushing? Dry brush. So there's obviously a lot of detail there and I wanted a brown oil wash to kind of fall into the cracks and the nooks to bring out the detail and uh, that's what I did. Hence why I'm telling you now. Um, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm actually doing it right now. Look at that. Look. So just a light dusting of uh, gunmetal grain because all of this was probably metal at some point before it became beautiful, beautiful rust. So I wanted to finish the painting with a dry brush from above, uh, basically painting in a downward motion where light would hit the thing. And here's the homemade pigment powders. If you haven't seen the video already, I'll put a link up here again. Uh, no one's watching that video, but this stuff works a charm. Look at that. So before I get the same old comment in the comments, Bill, how do you seal this stuff? That powder's gonna get everywhere. Just use some matte varnish spray, anything like that, it works fine. All right, all right, okay.
So here we are. Here's uh, my rusty robot graveyard mountain hill. I never know how to name things. Have you noticed that? I, I just, I'm terrible with names, but uh, basically a really cool looking piece of terrain for your table. And it basically is just plastic junk. It's junk from the junk I collect to make other stuff junk. So I'm recycling my recycling into hills of junk. It's, it's quite confusing. I know it's quite sad to destroy all my old butts, but you know, he's still there. I'm still going to see if I play a game on this board, you know, he's still going to be there. I'm still going to see his hand and his, his giant butt cheeks, the robot butt cheeks. Um, obviously one wouldn't be enough. So I made a few more. You can see those in a minute, but um, yeah, the best, best things to use for junk are these uh, clothes pegs, these hair curlers. They just look like complex metal shapes that, you know, you wouldn't be able to make and you can just cut them up to the eye. You know, it looks like a pile of junk, a complicated pile of junk, which is, you know, it's quite an achievement. It looks how I wanted it to look, which is, you know, I'm really happy with. So um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, and uh, yeah, here, would you like to see some more of them? Here you go, there's some more. Uh, cue the cut. He won't do it because last week I asked him to cut here and he didn't, and then he's probably just gonna cut in the middle of me. You know me so well, Bill, uh, you know me so well. Uh, thank you, patrons, as always, I love you all. Uh, I might not show it, I might not mean it, but I do, I like it. Okay, I like it, that's enough. So I made about four of these piles in the end and uh, each one was better than the last. Uh, my particular favorite is this uh, really big one you're gonna see just now. And uh, yeah, if you make any of these piles yourself, please tag me on Instagram and let me see your rusty piles. I love looking at people's rusty piles, delicious.